A very long welcome to be we have with us Mr. Shang Chunder Pondram, who is the delivery head of automation and industrialization at Gapgemini. A very warm welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us at CXO TV. Thank you, me. Thank you, sir. So, uh, before we proceed, uh, how the industry, uh, rather the automation industry, is evolving, uh, we would actually like to know uh, your experience over the years, how it has been, if you can share with our audience. Yeah, sure. So, a little bit of introduction. I have been um, with Capgemini for uh, seven years now. And in my current role, um, um, I'm with Cloud Infra Services, leading up in the automation unit. Um, myself and my team are responsible for uh, shaping up in the automation strategy for our customers and on delivering the outcomes, the business outcomes from automation. And I have been in the industry for uh, 28 years now. Being in the automation, I've been driving for more than uh, nine years. So I would, would, would like to believe that um, I have seen the lows and the ups of automation. And I have seen that in the automation also metamorphosize from what it was a years back. Pure we are going to test automation to what we are experiencing with um, data driven, um, the data strength being in chat GPT, um, the EA and I mean, the data and the pixel it coming to the so I believe um, automation has kind of uh, reached the type cycle and uh, they to stabilize for some time. Oh, right. Um, so, yep. That's wonderful. So I think uh, you know the entire automation is transforming is a transforming industry. Uh, I think across the uh, board. And uh, in your opinion, uh, we would actually like to know what are the key benefits that automation is. Uh, brings to the business and how does it enhance the productivity as well as the quality? So when we talk about automation, um, obviously, I mean, there is uh, a productivity benefit. Um, the automation and bot, as I would like to call it, is much more capable than a human. It can work seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Um, doesn't take leaves or doesn't go for a smoke or have coffee. Uh, and there is a certain productivity benefit that you naturally expect out of automation. However, to me, I mean, it is much more than that FT benefit. It's the ability to connect, I mean, the dots, connect, I mean, the data um, uh, silos into uh, something actionable. Where uh, uh, if, if you if you compare it to humans, uh, there is only a small percentage of humans who are able to connect I mean, the dots and do something I mean, wonderful. Whereas if you give away the instructions to bots, and the bots being I mean, the digital workers can replicate that every single time for every transaction. I think mean, that's the great benefit automation brings in. Which actually results not just in, I mean, the productivity savings, but enhanced quality of service for, I mean, the end user. Uh, he or she is able to, I mean, have a more meaningful, productive conversation, interaction with, I mean, the bar. Okay. And the, the other benefit, I mean, that I would like to, I mean, call is the maturity, the, uh, of, I mean, the role, um, that uh, automation lets uh, people to avoid them pursue. They need not be uh, engaged in uh, manual running tasks and leave it to the bots who are in lot better. I mean, uh, the entire automation industry, when we talk about it, it involves so much of integration of technology and system. So, how do you ensure that there is a smooth collaboration between different teams or departments? to implement uh, automation solutions effectively. So when we talk about implementing automation, I will I would like to I would like to I mean um highlight I mean four key stakeholders. One is I mean the customer where you actually I mean implement deploy up and this um, automation solution. Then on the other side you have I mean the account the file I mean 
when we were talking about, I mean, the uh, a vendor customer relationship, so a vendor uh, who has uh, a liaison with the customer is also a key stakeholder. Then you have, I mean, the platform because, I mean, the automation requires a platform to run, right? Which is probably managed by another party, I mean, outside of this customer or, I mean, the vendor. And then, I mean, the last I mean, stakeholder is, I mean, the development team, the automation development team. Now, it, it's it's like, I mean, all of these four stakeholders, and there, are, there could be, I mean, multiple, I mean, stakeholders, but these are in the four private stakeholders, and they need to, I mean, dance in unison. Right? I mean, there needs to be a good orchestration across these four teams if you want automation to be successful. Let me take an example. If let us say I'm in the automation I mean, so this team picks up a use case, which probably is not, I mean, the most effective one, because I mean the vendor gave that. Fine. Then you may end up I mean, developing a solution that doesn't benefit I mean the end customer. And let's say I mean you pick up an automation solution, but I mean the customer and it's the very again um good case, but I mean the customer has a transformation roadmap. Uh, in say six, nine months, okay, or one year, let's say. Even though you implement I mean, that automation, the end customer will change I mean, the landscape in some time from now, so it is not worth the break benefit. And let's say, I mean, the customer and the vendor both pick up I mean, a good use case. There is a good I mean, roadmap for I mean, runway for I mean, the automation to take off, but I mean, the platform is not stable. Even though I mean, the automation solution Property, I mean, is very optimal because it relies on the underlying platform. It doesn't help. Fine. So all these four have to come together as a fabric. Otherwise, I mean, it will be like I mean, the simple stacks. Uh, share some of the examples, you know, as you were mentioning, uh, of automation uh, as uh, conducted so far. So there are many. Um, uh, so. If if I if I take I mean, the most recent one um, within capture to my within cloud infrastructures the global business unit uh, which I'm part of we implement many framework based automation solutions now this framework relies very heavily on I mean the underlying platform it relies very heavily on I mean the vendor or in this case the account to provide us I mean the requirements and it relies on I mean, the customer. To provide us, I mean, security. Fine. So it's a it's a classic case where you have, I mean, all the right ingredients to, I mean, prepare a good, I mean, dish. However, I mean, if there is something, I mean, missing either from, I mean, the customer, the customer feels that, I mean, the security of, I mean, the implementation is not good enough, or the account gives, I mean, the requirements where they have missed on, I mean, some key exceptions to be added. Or, I mean, the platform actually, I mean, uh, is not very reliable. Even if there is a 1% or 5%, I mean, unavailability of this platform, it actually shows up to, I mean, the end customer as the solution not working. Fine. So, this, uh, I could, I could, I could probably, I mean, share more what, I mean, because of, I mean, the IP, I mean, concerns, I cannot, I mean, share more than this. But I mean, I guess I mean you get that. Uh, when we talk about this uh, industry, you know, it's very important as we're mentioning that in, in, to strike a balance. So a uh, balance between this streamlining process as well as maintaining the flexibility to adopt this changing business needs. So uh, how do you address that? So I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, how many of the audience are familiar with? Um, the Bangalore um, um, well, city, the uh, file. Um, so, just to give an analogy, uh, the roads department of I mean, this uh, BBFP, Mahanagar uh, Palitya, or the corporation, latest uh, a wonderful target. And two days later, you have I mean, the BWSSB, I mean, the sewerage department, or I mean, the water department, breaking the road to lay a point. And they do that, and probably a week later or a month later, the PESCOM, the electricity I mean, division, 
comes and actually, I mean, digs the pipe, digs the rope, and um, damage, I mean, the water or I mean, the sewage collection by doing it. Now, each person is doing, I mean, their job in the most effective manner. But what has happened is, I mean, they have not come together to plan back in their activities well. Fine. So, similarly, I mean, in the case of automation, Capgemini has a wonderful, I mean, methodology. It is called ESOAR. Okay. It stands for Eliminate, Standardize, Optimize, Automate, and then Robotize. Fine. So, it is very necessary before any process is automated, you first take a look at that and say, which of the steps within this process can be eliminated completely or for you? Probably, I mean, it's a vestige of, I mean, the appear in model that actually, I mean, doesn't require to be automated. Then you need to optimize, I mean, the standards are in the process because when you are talking of um, automation, it's, it's purely, I mean, a scale. Fine. You have, I mean, multiple solutions trying to do similar things that, I mean, you don't get benefit. So, I mean, it, it is very much necessary to standardize the operations. And then you need to optimize it because, like I said, you have, I mean, a certain step that is actually a vestige. And you probably do not require that to be automated. You probably need to come and take a fresh perspective to come and do that. So that is very much necessary before you end up with automation. Fine. So automation should not be treated uh, in silo, but it has to be again treated with respect to industrialization. Where I mean you have I mean the lean six sigma or the process improvement, which actually feeds into automation. In those cases, automation delivers a greater value. So, as we are actually discussing about this, uh, how automation technologies are uh, evolving, uh, emerging technologies do you say uh, as having the most significant impact of the automation and industrialization in the near future? So, the entire industry is now the buzzword is ChatGPT, right? Uh, so, uh, ChatGPT has. Um, a wonderful algorithm where it is able to cut, I mean, the data silos, make some meaningful, I mean, analysis uh, on, on the data. I would um, um, able to, I mean, do much more than what you thought about a year back or two years back. So, it, and, and, and there is a, um, what do you call, a um, uh, quantum leap from the analytics or I mean the data driven I mean story that automations uh, were driving uh, about I mean, two years back to what chat GPT can be oh, fine so I'm uh, the way I see I mean the transformation chat GPT is going to become a very common um, um, uh, use case uh, across I mean domains where um, leveraging I mean the chat GPT models uh, the automations can actually benefit from taking this data and doing action-oriented use cases. So, if I if I take an example, um, let's say I mean the insurance domain. We all know that underwriting is one of the um, um, effort-driven I mean task, right? Or there is a significant amount of risk analysis I that need to be done. There is a significant amount of effort that goes in where a claim is made, I mean, the state of the claim. So, with chat GPT, it is able to, I mean, pack the data models across, I mean, multiple I mean, dimensions. And then, I mean, trigger, I mean, automation to do, I mean, the process much better, much faster. Fine. So, uh, this is the way I see it on the, the data. Um, uh, will become, I mean, even more pervasive than, I mean, what it was. Or we are seeing, I mean, we are at the tip of that, I mean, iceberg where we are seeing that um, um, the transformation models is going to, I mean, leverage this. Probably, I mean, if two years from now, chat GPT, I mean, probably, I mean, might come to, I mean, the 10th version or, I mean, the nth version, which probably will be capable of making up more things. I mean, probably this conversation itself, you probably have an in much defined I mean, um, 
model with I mean the uh, improved models. So as we are addressing, like uh, with the emerging technologies, we are talking about AI and uh, chat GPT. So why implementing these uh, technologies in the uh, automation industry? Uh, there must be a lot of uh, challenges uh, that uh, you have to face. So what are some of the common hurdles uh, you have encountered and how do you approach the overcoming uh, approach in overcoming them? So one of the common hurdles is that uh, the expectations from automation isn't clear at the start of the implementation. And there lies the problem where the solution is developed, it is implemented, and the customer sees, I mean, the first interaction go through, first transaction go through this automation. He or she may say, but this is not what I expected. So, and this is a common problem across the industry. And if anyone in the industry says that, I mean, they haven't faced this problem, uh, maybe they have um, a very mature model that I would be very interested in. Um, so, um, uh, where I'm leading to is, um, when, when the requirements for the automation for that use case is given, uh, since, I mean, the process may not be standard or fine, making a time the exceptions that the process need to handle is not known to an individual or a group of individuals. And this is the first hurdle, I mean, that we face in implementing solutions. Um, and it cannot be that, I mean, all the exceptions or the long day can be implemented. So we probably need to take um, um, a balanced uh, view, what exceptions to be automated, what to be manually implemented. Second I mean, hurdle, I mean, that, that um, uh, I have seen that uh, we all automation, I mean, implementers get into is the time that it takes to develop this solution is very, very small compared to the effort that goes into the requirements, the design, the testing, and I mean, the deployment. Fine. So, assuming that, I mean, this solution is developed, quite a lot of time goes into testing and getting this solution deployed into production to see the light of the day. Fine. And um, this, again, as I mentioned, is a classic case of the four stakeholders coming together. The player, the vendor, the platform, and I mean the implementation, I mean part, the automation team. So um, well, the last hurdle, I mean, that um, I, I see, I mean, quite often is there is this perception that uh, the automation as a digital worker you put this in the clients, I mean, um, ITC. Day one, it starts to give benefits. However, I mean, just as humans, I mean, undergo an onboarding and time taken to be productive, even the automation solution has, I mean, the initial niggles. Uh, it needs to surpass that before it starts to, I mean, deliver on, I mean, the business outcomes. So these are, I mean, the common hurdles, I mean, that I see. Um, uh, I wouldn't say plaguing, I mean, the uh, industry, automation industry, but I mean, something, I mean, very common um, that need to be addressed. Uh, when we are talking about the success of the uh, automation and industrialization initiatives that are being taken, so what metrics or key uh, performance indicator are the KPIs we use to gauge the success? So the obvious KPI is the effort saved, automated, or fine. Um, however, I mean, we need to look at other aspects as well, uh, which is um, uh, what is, I mean, the quality of service improvement with the automation solution. Um, and, and the third, I mean, metric that I would um, uh, use, other than, I mean, the productivity savings is uh, what is, I mean, the level of standardization that it has brought in? Because if you look at, I mean, the automation solution, if it is a one-time solution, it doesn't add value. It probably needs to be implemented in multiple, I mean, scenarios to get, I mean, the best 
um, outcome. So reusability is a key KPI that uh, many industries, at least in Cap Gemini, in Marine Y unit, I mean that we pursue. So you are looking at I mean productivity savings, effort savings. You are looking at increased I mean quality of services away from I mean the CSAT scores. Um, uh, uh, the third aspect is I mean the um, uh, stat uh, reuse reusability as a KPI. So these would be I mean the top three KPIs that uh, I would. Oh, not all right. With this industry, uh, automation industry, are there any uh, specific uh, industries or sectors do you believe that we experience particularly uh, transformation or changes uh, through automation? So, would be even the automation sometime back, um, 10 years back, was probably a um, USP or five. And there is very few companies out there which used to boast of I mean that. But fast forward to 2023, I believe I mean it has become a commodity. Fine. If automation is not mentioned in the proposal that goes out to the client, then I mean there is something basic that the organization is missing out on. Um, of course, I mean I have seen many companies. Um, package automation with, I mean, the transformation journey with, I mean, the use of AI models, AI ML models um, and, uh, are going as as far as um, um, uh, uh, even if you're in chat GPT models, fine. So um, automation now is um, ubiquitous and um, um, I, I believe, I believe if uh, um, any proposal uh, needs to really stand up, it is not just the automation, but also has to come up with uh, uh, leveraged models that the organization has already dealt with. For example, Capgemini, if I have to talk about it, uh, we are into I mean, this space for quite some time. We have built I mean, significant IP. I will take a customer that uh, wants to leverage automation doesn't have to start from zero. Okay. There is already a set of reusable models that they can leverage or, or find. And I believe that's the winnable model in, I mean, the industry out there. Ever since uh, we have seen technological advancements uh, such as AI, ML, that, have, uh, that are there. And I think uh, these kind of technologies are impacting all kind of uh, sectors or industries. So, uh, what do you think, like, where would be the field of automation uh, and industrialization heading? And uh, what would be the death priorities in the next uh, two, three years? And if you can uh, give an outlook uh, for the overall uh, view of the entire uh, entire industry, uh, the, how it is going to transform, you can highlight this. So, uh, to answer this question, I would. Uh, probably use the analogy of, I mean, the computers. When I was in my college, um, computer was a very rare commodity. Computer science as a field was, um, um, had relatively lesser number of people, I mean, going after it. But now, um, computer, I mean, is so pervasive. One, I'm not limiting to shops or, I mean, the laptops. The phone, I mean, that you use um, is, um, probably, I mean, much faster than a decent laptop or a desktop. You are able to do, I mean, much more of fine. So the lines, the digital lines, I mean, um, has um, uh, really, I mean, been, in fact, I mean, I would say, I mean, there is um, an uh, invisible line there. So um, uh, uh, the industry, the digital industry has come a long way. Um, uh, Particularly talking about automation, and automation is just like, I mean, the desktop, laptop, or, I mean, the all-pervasive, I mean, mobile phones, the smartphones. Where you see is um, the um, uh, uh, data coming together. The ability of, I mean, these um, uh, algorithms to be able to uh, look at a totally different perspective of, I mean, the data come up with models that um, actually are life-changing, transformative. So um, automation complemented with those um, uh, data models will become, I mean, more effective. 
So um, um, that that's that's the number one transformation that we are living, we are um, witnessing right now. Second is um, uh, if you talk about, I mean, the storage. If you talk about, I mean, um, um, uh, algorithms or compute power to crunch, I mean, these data models. You are no longer limited to, I mean, the power that is within your, I mean, system or within your servers. Um, there is a majority of, I mean, the customers out there who have moved on to cloud or uh, different hyperscalers, Amazon Web Services or, I mean, the Google Clouds or, I mean, the uh, um, uh, Azure, fine. So, compute is no more a limitation, storage is no more a limitation. So, it is able to crunch greater, I mean, amounts of data in relatively shorter time. So, uh, the cloud will probably take uh, different, I mean, pervasive um, uh, manifestations uh, in the years to come, complemented with this data models again. And you will have, I mean, um, the automation bots, which are far more intelligent, which are far more superior to, I mean, just the process automation part. And they are able to, I mean, connect, I mean, all these are the gate enhancers. So um, it's interesting times, I mean, that we are living in, Burmi, uh, are frankly, uh, uh, we may not have, I mean, the uh, crystal ball to look five years from now, uh, or even two years from now, it would be, I mean, um, like uh, the moon slow. Fine, I mean, it's, it's going, I mean, vertically upwards now. So at best, I mean, we can see how, I mean, the one year would look like. But anything more than one year, I think, I mean, it would be um, way different, I mean, than what we are living now. Even the entire industry is going to go further and, uh, you know, it gives a much more better uh, user experience uh, to be precise. So I think uh, with this uh, come the end of the session, it was wonderful to have you and that shed such insightful knowledge for our sex to the audience. Thank you for sharing our time and uh, well, to be at this platform. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.